Hello everybody, Tarek37 here, and welcome back to Let's Solo, the Star Wars Fantasy Flight Games role-playing game. Um, this one's going to be a bit of a quick one. Um, this is more of a kind of information on the ship uh, video. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have as much I haven't had the, as much time this week with work and uh, various other things. Um, but I did want to kind of show you all... Uh, what I ended up picking for our ship. Um, the ship that, um, sorry, Yunor Rose um, ha has a hold of is a YV-560 light freighter. Um, the reason I picked this is, one, it's in like the Corellian uh, engineering line. Uh, so in my mind, I, when I think of Corellian engineering, I usually think of kind of rough exterior ships because Millennium Falcon. Um, supplies exterior I wasn't able to get that to work but supplies I figure would work very well uh, and inquire exit I think this ship from what I understand can be pretty fast and it's a science ship so it has um, various like it has engineering bays it has research bays it has uh, like sensor dishes um, and how I ended up and so how I picked it because I'm imagining I've been imagining for a while that um, Captain Rose, uh, Captain Unor Rose, it's going to take me a while to remember that name. Um, I think of her as an archaeologist kind of character. So, it would make sense that um, she's like a scientist, she's like an archaeologist. So, it would make sense for me, in my mind, for her to have a ship like this. Um, it's... Uh, fairly cheap, actually. It costs, I believe, about the same as a YT-1300. Uh, let me double check on that. A little bit more than a YT-1300, but not by much. Uh, YT-1300 costs 100000 The YV-560 costs 120000 So I figure that's a pretty good start. It does have a turret-mounted twin-medium laser cannon, dorsal mount. Um, and... It has one pilot and one co-pilot slash engineer, which hopefully Boatu will excel at, or at least be com somewhat competent at. Um, by the way, all of this, I um, the reason I found that I was able to find the ship was I have I've bought pretty much every Star Wars role-playing game book. I have a kind of a problem, but um, I was basically flipping through freighters trying to find one that fit, and the YV-560 kind of stood out to me. Um, because it has long-range sensor capabilities. Um, it was, you know, a good price. I guess that would make sense. Um, the hyperdrive is like a Class 2 hyperdrive, which is pretty much your standard. Uh, class 1 is slightly better, and anything faster than that is basically a very powerful ship. Um, but it also has a backup hyperdrive, which could come in handy if something happens to our main hyperdrive. Um, does have a Nava computer. It's got 80 encumbrance capacity, which isn't great, but um, its speed is a three, which is you know standard three armor, silhouette four, no modifiers of handling. It's got four and aft shields. Um, you know, looking there's there are some ships that are better. Uh, I think probably if I looked at a YT 1300, actually, let me see. Uh, again, I, I keep getting sidetracked off of telling you which book I got this from. The uh, Starships and Speeders uh, book. It is, an, uh, it is a collection of vehicles. Not every vehicle, but a lot of them. Um, if you're a GM, I highly recommend, recommend getting this book. Um, this book, Allies and Adversaries, and Gadgets and Gear, are books that you can bring to every table, no matter the era, no matter the uh, group you you're gonna you might get stumped and they and like you need a ship but you don't want to just pull a, a standard tie fighter or a standard x-wing you want to get something that you know something special um these books are great for that um they're also great for your uh players to look through um, you know, if they're, uh, in, you know, like, at the start of a campaign when you choose your ship, handing this book to your group and telling them, look through that, here's your price limit, I can, I can, we can negotiate, uh, for, uh, ch for, to get a more expensive ship, 
Um, we can negotiate if you want to get a really, really cheap ship and maybe getting a couple modifications. I've done that before. Um, that can be kind of fun. Um, I... The, the ship book is very helpful for those scenarios. The Allies and Adversaries book, it's just a great thing for a GM to have. You never know when your players are going to go off in a direction you didn't expect. You need stats. You need something. Go grab that book. Uh, Gadgets and Gear. Again, it's good for you to have like options. It's great for your players when they need to shop, but you don't want to... No one wants to bring every freaking Star Wars book there. They've had... I'm looking at it now. You, you got three core books that share most of the equipment, and then you've got one book per career, plus various other expansions. Um, it the So, Gadgets and Gear, Allies and Adversaries, and Starships and Speeders are great books to have for any GM, because these are going to help you a lot. Um, and obviously it helped me with Solo, with this solo game because, well, I can just look. I can look up. I can look through ships. I knew I was going to get a freighter or because that's what everything was pointing me to. Some kind of freighter. So, this is what I'm doing. Oh, actually. Uh, pardon me for a moment. I need to find something. I have a friend who gave me Shoot, it's gonna take me forever to find it. Um, but I have a, a a friend. He uh, he's a player in one of my groups, and he also runs games. And he has various random tables of his own. Uh, some for stuff you can find. Some stuff. Uh, one table he had was for um, uh, kind of little quirks of a ship that they're not necessarily. Um, they don't necessarily do a mechanical thing. Uh, it can be something like. Uh, a common one that I always find funny is a piece of your ship is like just falls off at the most comedic time. Uh, I love that one. It's it doesn't do anything really mechanically, but it's funny. It it, it adds a little bit of flavor to the ship. Um, I don't want to go like digging through my files right now because, like I said, I don't actually have a ton of time. Unfortunately, this week's been kind of busy. Um, but I did want to like have something available for you all to see. Uh, the YV-560 light freighter called the Oracle. Now, how did I get the name the Oracle? You might say, oh, because the... In a lot of solo games, you ask the Oracle. You like, Especially like if you played uh, Iron Sworn or Starforged. Um, they, ha you know, they have a lot, a lot of things ask the Oracle. You roll on a random table. That's not why I chose it. I went to fantasynamegenerators.com. They have a Star Wars uh, starship or spaceship... Uh, name generator, and I just, like, I clicked get names. Oops, dropped my book. Um, um, click, uh, I clicked get names once, and one of the first things I saw was Oracle, and I thought it worked from a standpoint of, like, an archaeologist or a scientist, and then it was only afterwards I realized, oh, and it also works... Uh, for so as a reference to solo uh, role-playing games, because a lot of times you'll ask an oracle, you'll roll a d100 or a d6 or whatever to find out a yes or no from the oracle. So this actually works very, very well. Um, next session, uh, Boatu is going to meet up with uh, Captain Eunor Rose. They are going to probably have a bit of discussion about where exactly they're going and what's going on. Um, you know what? While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to mull this over. Just so that I, you know, just so that I'm not just constantly, uh, just so that I'm doing something here instead of constantly saying, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Um, let's see if we can't get some descriptors of the planet we're going to. So, creepy? Strange. Okay. A creepy, strange planet. There's actually quite a few of those. Let me roll again, see if we can get any more uh, clarification on that. Tranquil. Simple. Okay. So maybe the first one is creepy, strange. That's where we're going to. Like a creepy, maybe a Sith temple. 
or a temple to some like dark side cult. Uh, but the planet itself maybe is tranquil and simple. My first thought honestly goes to Dantooine, but um, well, let's see. I don't think she's gonna go very far outside of Hut Space. She might even be going inside Hut Space. I'm gonna like zoom in a bit and see what's nearby. See if any names like jump out at me as potentially fitting the bill. Um, I don't think Lanik works. Uh, maybe we're going further into the Outer Rim. I don't think we're gonna go deeper into Hut Space. Uh, yeah, Castle definitely ain't gonna fit the bill. Nogur is also not gonna fit the bill. Um, hmm. What? Let's see, a tranquil, simple place that might have some creepy ruins. Hmm. Alright, let's roll one more time on the locations thing and see if I can't get just something more. Okay, these are starting to just, like, contradict each other. Um, you know what? I'm going to do what... Um, I'm just going to do... There's a Y missing in Kashyyyk. There are three Ys in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just noticed that and it bothers me immediately. Um, uh, Dantooine. Wherever Dantooine is, I think that should be our stop. That's the only place I can think of that is that has some creepy, strange ruins, um, and is would simultaneously be tranquil and simple. Dantooine's a very tranquil place. That was where my thoughts went to. I was trying to go against it because Dantooine is used almost as much as Tatooine, uh, especially in Knights of the Old Republic, but it's the only one that's coming to mind. Um, and heck, bleak and fortunate could also apply to Dantooine. So, I will say that. Our next, our stop will be Dantooine. Will we find out more about stuff from KOTOR 1 and 2? Or where, are we going to go in a different direction? I hope we go in a different direction. Um, but, um, yeah, um... That's all I have for this video. Again, I'm sorry for the shorter video where it's more kind of set up. Me, like, picking out the ship, kind of setting up where our, uh, where our next stop is. Um, but, like I said, it's been a busy week. Got work. Got various other things in my life going on. I um, uh, hope you all had a good week. I uh, hope you all enjoy this video as short as it is. And I uh, hope... Hope to see you in the next one. If not, I uh, hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.